Based off the DC Comics supervillain and anti-hero of the same name, Deathstroke Knights and Dragons is an animated web series that recently debuted in CW Seed. It's actually the fourth DC animated series in the CW's digital platform following Vixen, Freedom Fighters the Ray, and Constantine City of Demons, respectively. Though, as of now, Vixen isn't on the streaming service anymore. I've been looking forward to this series ever since it was announced. After all, it's the first animated series centered around my favorite supervillain of all time. A while back, I made a video speculating on whether or not it would take place in the Arrowverse, like Vixen and the Ray, or the DC animated movie universe, like Constantine. I'm still surprised that it's my most popular video. I mean, it was about a topic that I didn't expect a lot of people to care about. I think now would be a good time to discuss my thoughts on the first part of this series. Before I begin, I want to emphasize that this video will contain spoilers for Deathstroke, Knights and Dragons Part 1. If you haven't seen this and you don't want to be spoiled, stop watching this video and go watch Deathstroke. First, let's start with what I liked. I found the plot to be interesting. It covered the basic parts of Deathstroke's origin story, including the super soldier serum that gave him his powers, his affair in Cambodia, and the jackal kidnapping his son, Joseph. This more or less makes up the first half of this episode. After that, there's a ten-year time jump, and Slade now has to go rescue his son, who's once again caught in the clutches of Hive. I found this series' characterization of Deathstroke to be very interesting. This incarnation of Slade Wilson reminded me of how he was portrayed during the New 52, as DC's 2011 relaunch and reboot framed him more as an anti-hero than a full-on villain. Don't get me wrong, he's still the world's deadliest assassin, but deep down he has a moral compass. I think all the voice actors did a pretty good job. They all sounded believable and nothing really felt forced. I especially enjoyed Michael Chiklis as Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke, and Sasha Alexander as Slade's ex-wife, Adeline Kane. The action scenes were amazing. These intense, brutal fights once again reminded me of the Deathstroke comics that DC published during the New 52. I think my personal favorite action scene was Deathstroke's rematch against Bronze Tiger. It not only had them fighting in a literal ring of fire, but it ended exactly like the last time these two assassins fought each other. That being Slade cutting off one of Turner's arms. That all being said, I did have some problems with the animation. The lighting was off from time to time, and the colors didn't really shine as much as I wanted them to. There's also this yellow dot that occasionally appears in Slade's mask. I think it's supposed to be the light shining off it, but it just looks weird to me. So yeah, those are all my thoughts on Deathstroke, Knights, and Dragons so far. I can't wait to see how the series will continue in the future. Hello, I see that you have reached the end of this video. If you liked what you just saw, you can give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter at Dialogue Nerdy. If you really want to, you can also ring the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video.